The City of Ohio State podcast takes a deep dive into the support services that keep OSU's Columbus campus running 24-7. Hear from industry experts in facilities, construction, real estate, public safety, transportation, and more. The City of Ohio State podcast is brought to you by the Office of Administration and Planning. Go Bucks! Hello and welcome to the City of Ohio State podcast. I'm your host, Dan Hedman. On episode one, we covered safety. And for episode two, we'll take a look at construction happening around campus. Our guest is Kristen Poldeman, Associate Vice President of the university's facilities design and construction team. Kristen, thanks for being with us. Great to be here, Dan. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it seems like everywhere you turn on campus, there's construction underway. And, you know, while it can be a short-term inconvenience, the long-term benefits support Ohio State's mission to be a leader in academics, research, and patient care. So I think it's a great time to talk about what some of these projects are and the impact they'll make. First off, would you mind giving me a snapshot of the scope of your office? It's FDC, how many staff, projects, what's the financial spend, and even the portfolio of clients you work for? Yeah, I'd love to. Um, so FDC manages overseas campus design, construction, and renovation projects. Um, in FDC, we have 84 people. Um, we are across, really our project management teams are across five teams. Uh, we have a student life athletics uh, team. We have academic and regionals team, infrastructure uh, we have Medical Center, Wexner Medical Center, and Health Sciences team, and the Time and Change team, which is really the project management office that manages uh, some of the major projects. We have um, roughly about 800, a uh, little over 880 projects, active projects right now. It probably ticks up over a thousand uh, if you if you sort of you know count in projects that are uh, wow. trying to be closed out, that type of thing. But really, 884 active projects, and then uh, about 80% of our projects um, are really small projects, which everybody's kind of surprised about. The 80% are really projects under 200,000. Um, but as far as capital spend, uh, just to kind of give you an idea. Um, so FY22 uh, is almost done uh, here at the beginning of, of July, but so far about $808 million uh, were projected wow. at the end of the fiscal year of 22 to be at about $1.1 billion uh, for our capital spend. Wow. Okay. So yeah, truly like the name of this program, Ohio State really is almost its own city uh, when you talk about the scope of the projects and the financial spend. So you touched on this just a little bit, but I wanna circle back on it because I do think it's interesting. Everybody sees the major construction projects, the huge projects like the medical center, inpatient hospital, and some of those other ones happening on campus. But I know any project over $4 million goes to the board of uh, trustees for approval. And that makes sense. Those are high vis, high investment projects, but your work's about more than those major, major projects. What percentage of your work, I think you said maybe 80% is uh, what you'd call a smaller projects. And how do you provide balanced service? Yeah, as I mentioned, uh, 80, about 80% 80 of our projects are under 200. And we have um, in FDC, um, obviously we have a, a number of um, project managers and senior project managers, construction managers and senior construction managers. And you know, typically um, what we do is uh, we have uh, many PMs um, that are on each of the teams that I mentioned earlier that are really focused on uh, small projects. That's what they do. Uh, they love it. They serve our customers um, really well, and they work hard um, on all of these projects, and they balance a very large workload. Uh, it's not uncommon for um, many of our PMs that that do specialize in small projects and that sort of high turnover of projects to have 20, 30 or more projects. Um, and, and they love it. Okay. What I'd like to do now is run through some of the major projects happening on campus. You know, the ones where people drive by and they go, I wonder what that one is. Mm -hmm. So I'll give you a project name. You tell me a fast fact or inter interesting nugget about each one. And if you could just generally tell me where it stands in the process. So Wexner Medical Center Inpatient Hospital. I know it's a $1.79 billion project scheduled to open in 2026. It's going to expand to 840 
patient rooms and private settings. What else can you tell me that's interesting about that project? Yeah, so um, 1.9 million square feet um, and uh, construction will go to about middle of 2025. Uh, we'll be opening the project um, in the first quarter of 2026. A um, couple of fast facts on that right now. Um, steel is up to level 12, kind of on the north side of that building, uh, up to level 10 on the south side. Uh, we'll be done with steel uh, towards the end of the year here in, in November. And then uh, everybody likes to talk about the elevator cores that um, you can obviously see uh, as you drive by or if you're on 315. Our center uh, middle elevator core is the largest and tallest. Uh, it'll have 20 elevators extending to the helipad. Uh, which will be about 1,136 feet. The north and south cores will be about 1,088 feet. Um, but what's really cool about that building is um, it's just going to be um, such a great place for the Wexner Medical Center. And it's the largest um, project that Ohio State has uh, undertaken and largest project in Ohio. Yeah, you can certainly see it when you're driving by. You can see the cranes when you're going down 315. It'll be a really, really cool project when it's done. Over at 15th and High, the Arts District includes both the Timoshev Family Music Building and a co-located Department of Theater, Film, and Media Arts. What can you tell me about that one? Yeah, so um, there's actually two phases to the Arts District project. There's the Timoshev Family Music Building and then Department of Theater, Film, and Media Arts. Um, so the Timoshev Family Music Building, about 96,000 square feet. Um, and actually that building is complete now. Uh, we started moving in uh, occupants uh, here and uh, gosh, a week ago um, was the start of the move in. But that has a new large ensemble rehearsal space, some studios for jazz and percussion, uh, practice rooms, 40, about 45 practice rooms, recording studios. So it's a really cool space for them. Um, the theater, film, and media arts uh, department building, about 100,000 square feet, and um, they'll have uh, performance studios, office buildings, um, 490 seat uh, theater, and uh, they have uh, also spaces for students to create basically uh, experimental productions, a lighting lab. So really cool space for them, state of the art. Um, and a lot of those folks were walking uh, quite a distance over to Drake, uh, if you're familiar with Drake off of Cannon. Yeah. Uh, so this kind of puts them all together. Yeah, that's really cool. I've been, I've walked through the, the music building uh, to do uh, some pictures that we were putting online and, and it is a really cool space. And I think they'll really like it over there. Some great views of the oval too with the glass windows on the, on the edges of that building. So you mentioned Drake and once the arts district is complete, uh, the old Drake will come down as part of Cannon Drive phase two, 30 seconds or less. Uh, just tell us the importance of that flood levy. It's a certified levy that will bring it up to 500 year protection. Is that right? Right, right. So uh, Cannon was built about a one foot higher uh, than the uh, 500 year river flood elevation. And that's super important because um, obviously it provides um, pr protection for all of the investments and in infrastructure um, on the other side of the levee. So we're building a new hospital. Obviously you have the entire Wexner Medical Center, um, some key um, buildings and clinical spaces. And so it, it really protects that area and gives us that insurance that we need. That's what's so cool, I think, about the work that you do, is we've already talked about medical center and impacting patients. We've talked about supporting the arts. We've talked about this infrastructure that is so important for, you know, insurance and just making sure that these facilities stay open. And now we're heading out to the uh, innovation district located west of Kenny Road. So three exciting projects underway, the Interdisciplinary Research Building, the Energy Advancement and Innovation Center, and the Wexner Medical Center Outpatient Care West Campus. Don't have time to talk about all three, but they're all really, really uh, cool projects that are underway. I know you recently pulled off quite a feat with a large delivery. Can you walk us through how that worked, the logistics behind that, and why the equipment that went in through the roof could save lives here soon? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so you're, um, it's the, you're talking about the outpatient uh, West Campus project. It's across from yep. Martha Morehouse and a partnership with Nationwide Children's Hospital. So um, that's been exciting. 
And uh, at the end of March, we received our cyclotron delivery. Uh, and then uh, the equipment that goes into each of the proton uh, gantries and um, proton therapy. Now, I'll preface this with, uh, I am not a doctor. But that's okay. That's okay. We won't take you uh, for every single word that you say, <laughs> but a, a general picture would be good. But Google is wonderful. So, um, and of course, uh, I, I hang out with a lot of medical folks. So um, proton therapy, just for, for folks that maybe aren't familiar. So it's, it's a form of radiation treatment. It's uh, basically used to destroy tumor cells. And then um, they use the protons to send the beams of high energy um, uh, light, basically, that can target tumors more precisely. Um, and so um, the cyclotron, um, which uh, was built in Germany, uh, came over, like I said, at the end of March. Uh, it's about an 80 ton um, piece of equipment. And um, the gantries um, are actually, we have three here um, in the Outpatient West Campus building. And this is the first multi-gantry setup in the US. Oh, wow. And yeah, and one of our gantries has um, is Leo Chair capable. And my understanding of Leo Chair, it, it provides um, rather than a patient laying down in a gantry on a table, um, this is more of a seated upright position. Um, so we have uh, Leo capable um, set up in one of the gantries. It's not FDA approved yet, which is my understandings, but uh, we'll be ready for it when it is. And also this is the first flash technology um, usage also here at the, this building. And what flash technology is, it's basically like uh, I talked about the proton therapy. It's, I guess, an ultra high speed version of that. So really cool things that um, are going to be first for um, Central Ohio and first for um, Ohio State and Nationwide Children's. This, this yeah. is great that uh, Ohio State is a, a, at the forefront of that. The Wexner Medical Center, Nationwide Children's. I know we do a lot with Pelotonia around here as well. So um, I'm really excited for that to open up and thanks for talking about that. One more thing that I wanted to touch on related to the medical center, uh, which I think is really cool. Uh, some news recently broke about expansion plans moving forward for an outpatient care Powell facility. What's the latest on that? Yeah, so uh, we're excited. We um, are, we have a board meeting coming up this week, our Ohio State Board and Wexner Medical Center board meeting, and we expect to get approval for um, design services to enter into design services on that PAL ambulatory building. Um, the site's about 30 acres just north of Home Road, um, east side of Sawmill Parkway, across the street from Olentangy Liberty High School, if you're, if you're familiar with the PAL area. And similar setup to outpatient care in New Albany and, and Dublin, um, if you're familiar with those two buildings. Um, so we're working with uh, the medical center and Dan Likes group uh, and with ambulatory um, to understand, um, you know, what, what changes need to be made, what lessons learned we've learned from the other buildings, but basically it'll be the same, same thing up there in Powell. And, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll get design approval and we'll move right into design and, uh, and then soon construction on, on this, uh, third ambulatory building. Well, as a Powell resident, I thank you for your services. <laughs> Uh, hey, uh, I hate to do this to you because I know you're really passionate about this next and last question, but um, let's try to keep it to uh, 60 to 90 seconds. I'm going to challenge you on this one. Okay. I know FDC is undergoing some changes in the way it approaches its work. You and your leadership team are looking at processes, how to best support your clients. What's the latest on stakeholder insights? And if you had to explain this to somebody, uh, one or two things to take away from it, what's, what's the key? Yeah, so the key is... Um, Last year, we interviewed, we did conducted over 200 plus interviews. And um, this was uh, really something that's never been done. And uh, we talked to a cross section of university and industry. And this is transformative for FDC. Uh, we've taken all of those interviews, we've taken um, conversations from industry and clients and community. And we've, we've boiled it down into basically a framework for change. And 
we're looking at processes, we're looking at communication, we're looking at collab, uh, collaboration and culture. And um, we, we want to be a better customer, client, partner. We want to serve the university community better. And so that's really the big driver of all of this. It's, it's really an exciting time to be an FDC. And I'm really passionate about, um, I'm really passionate about looking at, at all of our processes and just serving everybody better. And I, I love collaborating. So it's, it's a great framework for uh, really the transformation. That's exciting. We'll have to have you back on in a few more months. There's always news around construction, uh, but good to hear all the work taking place on campus. Thanks for taking the time to chat with us today. Thanks, Dan. I really appreciate it. The City of Ohio State podcast is brought to you by the Office of Administration and Planning. On our next episode, we'll travel across High Street to University Square to see how Ohio State is creating connections with the nearby neighborhood through a multi-phased construction project. Until next time, be kind and go Bucks.